online courses are so popular right now. It seems like everybody wants to launch one, but you know what the reality is? Most people won't. Yeah, the reality is not that most people won't make money. It's that most people won't even launch their course, so they can't make money. They just don't. I recently surveyed my audience of over 10,000 people, and you know what I found out their number one challenge is or frustration? That they haven't launched their online course yet. Some have been working on it for three years and haven't launched. When I asked in that survey why they haven't launched their online course, I found four distinct reasons that broke my heart, but also don't surprise me. And what I'd like to do today is share those four reasons with you to see if you can identify with any one of these in the hopes that it'll help motivate you to actually take action and launch your first online course. Let's discuss. Welcome to episode 76 of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less, and live and give more. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. Thanks for hanging with me today. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, I love you, appreciate you listening in. Why don't you give me a review and let me know what you think of the show. It means a lot to me. And if you're watching on YouTube, I love you. I appreciate all the comments and the likes, great discussions we've been having lately on the channel. I got a good one for you today. I mentioned at the top of the show that I surveyed over 10,000 people and I asked them a bunch of questions, but primarily I wanted to know what is their biggest goal for the next few months in their business. And the majority of them wanted to launch an online course. Like I said, that's what their goal was just to launch. More specifically, do you know how much money most of my audience wanted to make? $1,000. They want to launch a course and have it make $1,000 a month. Now, many of them want more. Some said between one and 2,000, and obviously some said bigger, bigger numbers. But the majority, overwhelming majority of my audience were stuck at zero. They were stuck at zero and they hadn't gotten to $1,000. So for them to have a course launched that gives $1,000 a month in income into their pocket would be huge. And you know what? I agree with them. Because once you make $1,000 a month from an online course, you realize you can make $10,000. But there's a lot of work that goes into launching an online course, and a lot of people are getting stuck there. And so even though they're not asking for a lot of money necessarily— It just is, there's so much friction there to get that course launched. So we're going to talk about the four reasons they shared why they haven't launched in just a minute, because I'm pretty sure if you haven't launched your online course, you're going to identify it with one of these four, if not all four. But before we jump in, I was so burdened by the survey results that I got. It wasn't just a few people. Like I said, it was the overwhelming majority of people's goal was to launch their first course with the the goal of making $1,000, but they weren't doing it. I've decided to do something about it, okay? I'm putting together an entire live workshop event called How to Make Your First $1,000 Course. And guess what? It's free. This is going to be a three-plus-hour live training. This isn't a 45-minute webinar. This isn't just some light teaching. I literally put together, I was going to sell it, but I decided to give it away for free, Uh, an entire three to four-hour, it'll probably go longer, training live next week, October 15th. I want you to come if you have not launched your first online course. Here's what we're going to cover during our three-plus hours together. How to go from zero dollars to a thousand dollars. Literally, how do you go from zero to a thousand? How to build your online course, step by step, what you need to do, how to outline it, how to make sure it's going to be a killer course, how to build an audience so you can sell that course too. I'm going to give you a complete business map, including a 12 month promotional plan. That's right, you have to have an entire promotional plan. The people I have found that make the most money and have the most success in their online business don't just wing it every week. Like, oh, what should I do this week? They have a 12-month promotional plan. I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. And I'm gonna give you a three-step sales strategy that you can use for simple sales pages, sales videos, and sales emails because that's where a lot of people get stuck is they might build a course, they might have an audience, but they suck at selling. Sales copy is hard. It's actually not that hard, but you have to be trained in a way to think about it effectively, 
and I've put together a real simple three-step sales page strategy that you can use to create real effective but short and sweet sales copy that'll help you sell your course. So what I'm gonna do in this three-hour training, teach you all this stuff, and then because it's live, there will be Q&A. So for every section, every module that I'll be teaching you, I'll be able to stop after the teaching portion and answer your questions live on the spot. Troubleshoot, workshop together live. That's why it's a workshop. It's an event. We're actually gonna be doing this together. So if you would like to launch your online course, you could still do it this year. You don't have to wait months and months and months. I think that's one of the biggest problems is people wait too long. If you would like to launch your first course and make your first thousand dollars this year, why not? Come to this live event. It's absolutely free. It's gonna be action-packed. There's gonna be live q and I'm gonna give you step-by-step strategies, concrete tools to use to actually build, sell, and market your course so you make your first thousand dollars. And like I said, the best part about it is it's 100% free to attend. So to grab your ticket, just go to 1kcourse.com. It's the number one, 1kcourse. Dot com, or if you're watching on YouTube, I'm gonna link to it below. But you gotta register to come. There's no replay, there's no recording, so if you want this material, you have to come, you have to register, okay? Please, don't miss out on this. It's October 15th. All the details are gonna be there on the registration page. Again, 100% free to attend. I have the time, I've got the space, my people have basically made it clear that they need help in this area. So I decided to do something about it. We're gonna do this entire three plus hour live event from how to make your first $1,000 course. Just go to 1kcourse.com, register your spot, and I'll see you there next week. Okay, now that we got, hopefully, your spot locked in, let's talk about the four reasons people don't launch their course. This will be really honest and frank, because I I love these responses in the sense that they were very human and they're very real, okay? Uh, I don't view them as excuses in the sense that I don't think people are making these up, but we need to address these four reasons people aren't launching their first online course to remove them as obstacles. That's really what they are as obstacles, okay? Now, it's easy to turn an obstacle into an excuse if you don't remove it. It's really up to you to remove it, okay? No one's gonna remove it for you. So I'm gonna just bring these to your attention. If you identify with any one of these obstacles, then it's up to you to remove it. And my hope is that you will take action and stop turning that obstacle into an excuse. Okay, reason number one, and I think the number one reason in my survey of people, again, over 10,000 people, the number one reason that people haven't launched their first online course is due to lack of time makes sense. A lot of my students are busy. Are you busy? Probably. Uh, They cited marriage, family, work, okay, as just the top three. And then there's other things. A lot of them are involved in their church or in their community, or they have a bunch of other hobbies that are important to them, whatever it is. There was three to five dominating things in most people's lives that were sucking up all their possible time. Okay, this makes sense because if you look at your calendar and if you look at your actual days and from sun up to sundown, it's full, you're like, Graham, I would love to launch an online course, but the more I learn about what it takes to launch an online course, the more I'm thinking that this is a lot of work and I can't seem to find the time to pull it off. So they don't. And I think... When the time is your obstacle, the natural default hope is one day I'll have more time. And that one day could just be like, hey, next week, maybe this week's really busy. Could be it's a busy month. Could be that 2020 hasn't gone the way you hoped. And so you're like, this is just not the year for me. I'm just scrambling. There's just too much going on. A lot of, uh, actually a lot of my students are women. It's pretty cool. Uh, from the recording revolution, doing that for over a decade, the majority of my followers over there were men. Like 90 to 95% of the people consuming my content were men as opposed to women, which is sad because there's a lot of women who are really talented in the audio space, but it's mostly men. 
the moment I started this brand, Teaching Online Business, that's shifting. There's a lot of women who follow my content who are very interested in starting an online business. And uh, it's not quite 50-50 from the, the stats that I see from the, the numbers and the robots and the things that I can measure. It could be closer to 50-50 in real life, but the stats I see are closer to 70-30, uh, 65-35. So there's a lot more in this brand than the other. And so a lot of my followers are women who are mothers, and a lot of them are stay-at-home moms. And a lot of them right now are struggling because of the whole pandemic and schools not being open or them choosing to have their kids do school online. So now they're not only a stay-at-home mom with maybe young kids, but their school-age kids are home doing school. So their pockets of time that they had are sucked up. So that's another modern, current reason why people don't have time. So they're thinking, this is just not the year for me. I don't have time this year. Maybe when my kids go back to school, I'll have time. So I think that's the default thinking is, I don't have time now. My hope is that I'll have time in the future. Let's make something absolutely clear. Time is what you make it, okay? Yes, physically, there's a fixed number of hours in the day. The earth rotates 24 hours at a time, right? I get that. But no one is gonna magically free up your schedule. It's just not gonna happen. Time functions a lot like Parkinson's law functions in a lot of other ways. So Parkinson's law is typically associated with work, and it states that work expands to fill the time allotted for its completion. But time in general, like life activities in general, tend to do the same thing. So if you open up your schedule because you no longer have that commitment or the kids go back to school and I have time in your day, it gets filled up with other stuff. It just always does. Time just seems to suck in like a black hole and fill itself with things by default. Uh, a lot of times it's just us on the computer or our phone. So I don't know what it is about time, but it fills it up. So you cannot bank on time opening up for you. You cannot bank on your schedule changing. It may, it may be a real obstacle now for you that you're a little too busy, but it's ultimately your decision of what you do with your time. It's your decision on how efficient you are with your time. A lot of us put limiting beliefs on our time. I don't have the time. You make time. You make time. Instead of using the verb have, I don't have the time, use the verb make. I will make time for what's important to me. We always do. If you're busy at your desk trying to create some content, and your kid walks in bleeding with a knife stuck in their leg, even if you're slammed, you're not gonna say, I don't have time to tend to your knife wound right now. You will make the time because it's a priority in that moment, right? Your child's life is at stake. You make time for what's important to you. It's as simple as that. So you are never gonna launch an online course if you don't view it as a priority because you're not gonna make time for it. You're, we're all busy. We're all busy. Until you decide that launching your online course, making that first thousand dollars and beyond is a priority to you, then you're not going to make the time to do it. So perhaps for you, time is the obstacle. Don't make it an excuse. Just remove the obstacle by choosing to make time. I've done a bunch of content here on the channel on the 80-20 principle, on Parkinson's law. These are two amazing truth that I use to hack my time to become super efficient. So those are some helpful practical tools you can use. But before any of those, it really starts in your mind. It's a decision. What's a priority to you? Is launching your online course a priority? Then make time. Find a way. We make time for Netflix. We make time for a lot of other things that are valuable. But are they more valuable than you starting your online business? I don't know. It's up for you to decide. Lack of time was the number one reason people don't launch their course. Again, we don't have time, we make time. Number two was lack of direction. And this was explained in a couple different ways. I don't know what to do first, second, third. Um, I don't have a lot of clarity over where to go. I see a lot of people teaching a lot of different things when it comes to an online course. And so 
it's sort of paralysis by analysis. Literally many of my survey results, the students said that. I just, I'm feeling paralysis by analysis. There's so many options. There's so many ways to launch an online course or make money. So I haven't done anything. I'm, wa- I'm waiting for direction to then know what to run hard after. Now I identify with this one personally because I have very black or white thinking. If you follow the Enneagram, I'm a one on the Enneagram, which is the perfectionist or the reformer. So I look at things as right or wrong, black or white. This is the best way. This is not the best way as opposed to shades of gray or lots of different ways to do things. So that can be a great quality. Um, many ones on the Enneagram are like de- like determined to cause change for the better, right? Uh, but then it can also be a curse because I can have this limiting like, well, I don't have all the information, so I can't move. You know, I've had to work really hard to move past that. Uh, and so I see this definitely from their perspective. Lack of direction, I don't know where to go. Graham, I'm watching your videos. I'm watching other people's videos. I'm reading a bunch of blog posts. I got all this information about launching an online course, but I don't know what to do first, second, or third. I see things about webinars. I see things about Facebook groups. I see things about content. I see things about ads, SEO. I don't know. I don't know. Kajabi, I don't know. Lack of direction. Okay, again, this is a real obstacle that people face. Do you identify with that? Do you feel overwhelmed with all the things that you should be doing, could be doing, possibilities, ways to do it, strategies that you just freeze? Is that you? Lack of direction? Okay. Lack of direction is an obstacle, but let's not make it an excuse. Because let's be honest, after a week or so of saying lack of direction is the reason you haven't launched an online course, it's it's bleeding into excuse territory. Because no one is prohibiting you from taking action on one of those directions. What's the worst that could happen if you chose one direction, one strategy of launching a course, one tactic, and just went hard after it to see what happened? What, what's the worst that could happen? It doesn't work. That's probably the worst that could happen because then you will have spent a lot of time and effort and energy trying to launch a course in one direction and it didn't work. But is that really any worse than you doing nothing? Some people believe so. Some people have so much fear of failure that it masquerades as, well, I'm not sure which direction to go. So I'll just wait until I have more clarity about the direction. But really, that is just the fear of failure because you're really afraid that if you made a decision, started to try to launch your online course using one method, one technique, whatever you know at the time, whether it's complete or incomplete information, what happens if you do all that, put up a sales page, nobody buys, you will feel like a failure. So it's a lot safer to just claim, I don't know which direction, I wish I had some clarity, I'm making air quotes if you're listening to the podcast, uh, and not do anything because then you can't fail. But how, how good is that really? Because I read these responses, these were all anonymous responses, okay? I'm reading through hundreds and hundreds of responses and the the emotion coming through the screen as I'm reading the responses is evident. It's just sadness. It's not like, oh, I'm so glad I haven't launched, at least I haven't failed. It's like, I really want to launch. I'm sad that I haven't launched. I believe that it's probably possible, but I just haven't. So is it really better to just do nothing and not fail? Is that really a win? I don't think so. I actually think that's a really depressing way to live. Really depressing way to live. I don't want that to be you. This is one reason why I put out so much content and I try to put out so much good content. Hopefully you find it good, actionable, practical. I try to teach everything that I've used and learned over 11 years of running an online business, running two online businesses. I try to give you the goods so that you have clarity, so that you have direction. That's why I'm doing this free workshop next week. I've prepared three plus hours of content that I could sell as a course. I'm giving it to you for free. I'm hosting this event. I'm giving my time for you so you have clarity. So you know what to do first, second, and third. And I hope you come. It's free. You should attend it. But you know what? You don't even need to come to be able to start. You don't need to. You don't need much more to start. You know, you know a ton. If you've listened to one of my episodes, one of my videos, you know more than most people know about building an online course business. Why don't you just start with the one thing you've learned? 
So much of the learning process comes from doing. So much of the growth comes from taking a first step. I know from someone who wants perfect information that I prefer, if I had it my way, to consume all the information, watch all the courses, read all the books, go to all the webinars and seminars and conferences, take it all in, synthesize it, create my path, and then take my first step. I totally get that. That's what I would like. That makes sense to me and my personality. But you know what? All my greatest success has come from doing the exact opposite. The money that I've made, the growth that I've had, the impact that I've had have not come from having a perfect plan. They've come from starting. There's a great book by John Acuff called Start. It's all about that. His whole thrust in the book is you and I can't control the finish line of life or vocation or career or success, but we can control the starting line. So instead of worrying about the path that you're gonna take, because I usually want the straightest line, and although I'm going to give you the straightest line I can give you, there's no guarantee what your path is going to look like. It's probably going to be all wobbly and twisty-turvy. That's, that's life. You might as well start and get on the path because then you're going to see what's around the next bend and you're going to be able to adjust to it. You're going to see what's around the next bend and be able to adjust to it. I find that I learn more when I'm moving towards my goal. The same information might be in front of me. It could be a book that I'm reading, but I will synthesize the information in the book more if I'm actually taking action while I'm learning. Does that make sense? You learn while you do. You're more perceptive to the wisdom that others are giving you while you're moving closer to your goal. So don't wait, don't sit back and wait till you got perfect clarity and direction. Start today and continue to learn, but learn as you go. It's, it's an excuse. Lack of direction is an excuse. There is too much information out there right now that's clearly presented to you for free that you can get started. There's no reason to sit by because of lack of direction. Reason number three from my survey of over 10,000 people who haven't launched their online course, why they haven't launched, lack of motivation. This was very interesting. Because on the one hand, they seem very motivated. I want to launch an online course, but then when they answer why they haven't, ah, I'm not motivated enough. I, I like this reason because at least it's honest. Because I think most things that we want in life that we don't have is because we just aren't motivated enough to run hard after them. You see people who, if they want something bad enough, they run hard after it and they get it. If you don't want it bad enough, you're probably not gonna expel the energy and the resources and the focus and the creativity needed to get it. So you won't get it. It makes sense. I've had plenty of people when I started the Recording Revolution years ago who's, who have said in snarky side comments, whether it's on a video or in a, a forum, Reddit or some place or Facebook group saying like, why, why is the recording revolution such a big player in this niche? Why do people follow Graham's stuff? I could do better content. I do better content. I've posted better content before. I think it's because they didn't want it bad enough. I really needed this to work. I started my first online business while on food stamps when I had a mortgage and a baby to feed and a wife in the middle of a global recession. I didn't have money. I needed money. I needed to not be a, a deadbeat was my fear that I was just going to be not providing for my family. That motivation was strong. That made me motivated to pump out content and figure out what people wanted. And if my first course didn't sell very well, make another course. If that didn't sell well, make a different course. Tweak a course. Ask my people what they want. Make something, make something until something popped and then continue to do it more. I never wanted to slow down. I never wanted to just chillax. I never wanted to say, oh, I've put out 500 videos. I should be good by now. I never wanted to say, oh, I don't need to keep making content every single week because money's coming in. I kept going. Now, I actually worked less and less every single month and every single year it went on. I don't believe in overwork. If you've ever listened to any of my content, then you know that. I went from working 32 hours a week to five hours a week and making $0 a month to making over a million dollars a year by working less. But the things that mattered, I kept the gas on. Most things don't matter in your business, so you can let the gas off. But the things that mattered, I kept the gas on. I didn't stop because why? I'm motivated. I'm motivated. 
There's plenty of people that are better than I am at this stuff. There's plenty of people that are more talented than I am at this stuff. But they gave up. Or they didn't really even start. So my question for you, if motivation is a thing, if you're like, yeah, I would like an online course launched. I'd like to make $1,000 a month extra just from an online course. Yeah, I feel like I could do that. I'm interested. That's why I'm watching your stuff, Graham. But I don't know. I just don't seem to have the motivation. You gotta ask yourself, what's wrong with you? How can you want something and then say, I don't know if I'm motivated to go after it? Either want it or don't want it. That's what I'm asking you to do. Either want it or don't want it. If you don't want it, if you don't want an online course, you don't want to make money online, whether it's on the side or full-time, totally fine. Then stop watching my video. Stop listening to my podcast. Stop wanting it. If you don't want it, then say, I don't want it. And then find something else you want and run hard after it. I'm totally fine with that. Not everybody is going to want an online course business. But if you want it, then don't say lack of motivation is the reason you don't have it. If you want it, then really want it. Visualize what $1,000 a month coming in from your online course would do for your life. What will you do with that money? How will it improve your life? What if it became $2,000 a month? What if it became $5,000 a month? What change would happen in your life if that kind of income was coming in? What would your day look like? What would your weeks look like? Visualize it. Get clear about how amazing and desirable and delicious that goal is of launching your online course business. And then start. Start. Lack of motivation is not good enough. I get it. Motivation is important. But if you want something, want it. If you don't, then stop saying you want it and not running hard after it. Fourth and final reason people in my survey said that they haven't started their online course, even though they want to, even though they just want to make their first $1,000 a month, is lack of confidence. I want to pause here for a moment because I think this is a very real and palpable one. You might feel like you can make the time for it. You might feel like you have enough direction to at least get started, and you might be very motivated to start. I find that many of my students are all three of those. But the one thing lacking is the confidence, the self-confidence that, that they can do it. Do you lack confidence that you can launch your online course? If so, what, what is the lack of confidence? Is it that you don't feel like you could build an audience? Is it that you feel like you don't have the confidence to build a course people want? Is it lack of confidence that you have what it takes to be on camera? Is it lack of confidence that you have the ability to sell once you have a great product? Like you know it's great and people like it, but you don't feel confident selling? Is it deeper than that? Is it that you don't feel like you are worth $1,000 a month? Do you feel that you don't deserve an online business that's profitable? Do you believe incorrectly that money only comes from hard work and that there would be something wrong inherently by launching an online course and then having $1,000 a month come in passively? All of these, I think, are tied to a lack of confidence in who you are. You don't feel worthy. You don't feel like you have the ability to do it. There's others that are better than you. Do you lack confidence? That's a real obstacle to launching. I get it. Have you ever heard the term fake it till you make it? I don't know where you land on that term. I've heard a lot of people say they hate that term. I've heard a lot of people say it's it's true. I don't like the word fake because I think faking anything in this day and age is just a recipe for disaster. I think we live in an age of authenticity. It's just too obvious because of online content, social media, things like that. It's just too obvious when you're faking it. And I don't think fake sells anymore. Not as well as it used to, at least. I think what people want, 
and are longing for in a world of fake news, fake influencers, fake wealthy people. There's a lot of fake out there. In this world, I think what people are longing for is real, is a person or people or organizations or leaders who are genuine human beings. Flawed, because all humans are flawed. If you think otherwise, you haven't hung out with a human. Flawed, but awesome. Because I think all people are awesome. Genuine people who have something genuine about them that they genuinely want to offer people. That's a beautiful thing and a desirable thing these days. So authenticity is very important. But the problem is, if you don't genuinely feel confident, you don't authentically feel awesome, you might never launch. You might be waiting around until you feel confident or feel awesome. And I got to tell you, unless that's your personality, unless you are a confident person by nature, and some of you are, it's not going to come out of nowhere. It's not going to come out of nowhere. You have to decide to be confident. So I don't think you need to fake it until you make it, but you really have to change the way you view yourself. You don't have to be the most influential person on planet Earth. You don't need a million followers. You don't need thousands of followers. You don't need to be the best at your discipline or in your topic or niche. None of that matters. My question for you is, can you or have you in the past helped one person? Can you help one person achieve something? Can you help one person be on the path to success in your area of knowledge or experience or expertise? Can you do that with one person? Have you done that with one person? Have you sat for coffee with a friend, helped them navigate a tricky situation and get results in an area? Have you done that? One person. Okay? If you have, think about how you help that person, what specifically you help that person do, what that person's response was after you helped them, how that made you feel when you realized that you helped that person, even if it's a small way. Think about those thoughts and those feelings and those experiences because those things will breed confidence. You have so much to offer. You have so much value in you. Even if nobody else sees it, you've helped somebody in the past. I know you have. You may not th have thought it was a formalized helping or coaching or consulting. You just were being you. But that's, that's no different than what I'm doing here. When I put out a video, when I record a podcast, all I'm doing is trying to help you. I'm just trying to share what I know that can help you. I'm nothing special. I'm, re I'm really not. But at the same time, I am special. I'm created in the image of God. I've been given a unique set of skills and abilities that he put me on this earth to help people with. They're not unique in the sense that no one else is teaching this or sharing this, but they're unique to me in the sense that not everyone teaches this or shares this or has a set of experiences. So all I'm doing is being 100% me and hoping and believing that there's other people like me out there who need to hear from me and connect with me. That gives me confidence that I know that I've helped somebody in the past and I'm helping someone right now. When I'm not confident, when I'm insecure, I look back to the past, the people that I've helped, whether paid or free, doesn't matter, to gain some confidence. So think about, have you helped one person? If so, I want you to write everything about that person that you remember, the in interactions, what you helped them with, the questions they had, the questions you helped them solve, whatever success story they gave you afterwards. Oh gosh, Graham, I just wanted to update you. I did what you said. This really, really worked. Thank you so much. Write it down on a, a piece of paper if you need to and put it on your desk and look at it every day if you need to. This will help you have confidence. Look, it is scary to put out content. It is scary to launch a course. I get it. I get it. But <laughs> you're not gonna launch until you launch. And you're not gonna get confident just waiting around for confidence to find you. You have to decide to be confident. You have to have a reason why you can't be confident. 
You have something unique and wonderful to offer the world, and the world needs to hear. Even if it's a small slice of the world, they need to hear. So I, going back to the fake it till you make it thing, don't fake it, but choose to be confident today. Confident enough to take the next step. You don't have to fake confidence, but you have to choose confidence. It is a choice. The more you do, the more opportunities will come, the more people you'll be able to help, paid or free, which will breed more confidence because you'll have more of this feedback loop that you've helped people. And then the more of that you get, the more confident you become. But you actually have to start the feedback loop. You have to start it. So turn on the camera, turn on the microphone, fire up the keyboard, put out content confidently, build your online course confidently, knowing that you've helped somebody in the past, you're gonna help somebody in the future. Doing more of that will breed more confidence. Take that obstacle and remove it. Don't let it become an excuse. I'm not confident. I'm not self-confident. Choose to be confident and you will become more confident. So those are the four biggest reasons. I didn't even make these up just from survey results. So many of my people want to launch an online course. They want to make $1,000 a month off their online course and they haven't launched yet. Why? Lack of time, lack of direction, lack of motivation, and lack of confidence. If you're watching on YouTube, which one of these do you struggle with the most? Leave a comment below. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, I want you to answer the question out loud right now. Which one of these has held you back from launching your first online course? And what are you going to do about it? How are you going to turn it from an obstacle and remove it so it doesn't become an excuse and actually take action on launching your online course? If you need help with this, if you want direction, motivation, inspiration, and someone to come alongside you and help you launch your online course this year and make your first $1,000, I want you to come to my live event next week, October 15th. How to launch your first $1,000 course. It's absolutely free. Again, this is going to be a three-plus hour event where I'm going to walk you through how to go from $0 to your first $1,000 launch. I'm going to help you build your product. I'm going to teach you how to do that. I'm going to help you build an audience, teach you how to do that. I'm going to give you a 12-month promotional plan so you don't just launch and then it dies. You launch and then you build a business around it. And I'm going to give you a three-step sales strategy to create simple but effective sales pages and sales videos and sales emails. Three steps. This is sales copy at its essence, okay? I'm going to teach all of this to you in a three-plus-hour live event. And there's Q&A, so you can come and not just learn, you can ask questions, and we can workshop it together for you. There's going to be no replay. There's no recording of this. After the fact, if you want this material, you have to come. So register your spot, carve out time in your day, and be there, okay? Just go to 1kcourse.com. That's the number one, 1kcourse.com. Or if you're watching on YouTube, the link's below. You can just click on that to register and get your free ticket. All the instructions will be there of how to access the live event. You can access it from your phone or computer or tablet. It's pretty easy. All the details of exactly when it's happening and how to get into uh, the live training will be there, but it's free. It's free. I'm giving this out for free. I'm teaching you for free because I felt such a burden after seeing this survey that I want to help you out. So if you want help, if you want me and a bunch of other people to come alongside you and help you get the focus, the direction of the tools you need to launch your first online course this year, don't wait till next year, this year, and make your first $1,000, then come. It's a free event. October 15th, that's next week, 1kcourse.com. I'll see you there. So that's it for today, my friend. I hope you're registering. I hope you're going to come to the event, and I can't wait to see you. You'll get more details again emailed to you once you register and get your free ticket. I'm really, really excited about this material. I can't wait to dive in with you and help you launch your course. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you in another episode real soon.